Damn, the only thing more bleak than the Arctic is probably this movie about the Arctic. Arctic Void. This film appealed to me because when I seen, you know, the thumbnail for it, I seen a couple of screenshots from the movie. It looked very empty and a lot of nothingness. And weirdly, that's kind of what drew me into this. I wanted to know what they could do with the screenshots being bland. And I am very much not disappointed by this. So in this, we're following like three main characters. You've got Ray, Alan, and Sean. Ray and Alan are clearly friends from a long time ago and they make TV shows. The latest one's out in the Arctic. Ray is like your wisecracker. He's in front of the camera. He's got all the chat. He's there to make friends wherever he goes. Whereas Alan's the producer of the TV show. He's going through his own personal affairs during the plot of this movie. And Sean, he's the cameraman. He got brought in like two days notice, so he's very last minute. He doesn't know these other two, but he's there for the ride. So the opening couple of minutes to this movie, I was very drawn in, but curious at where it was going to lean because a lot of the shots are kind of like I was saying, where it was just very, a lot of nothing, very bland, but Ray is interjecting a lot of humor and bouncing off of Alan's kind of serious, business oriented mentality first, whereas Ray's kind of just come along for the ride. Now they're both together and making this show, but, but that dynamic is on full effect here. So they've done a really good job at setting that up. And then we draw Sean, who gets his own little moments to shine kind of throughout here. Alan, as the producer, has just got a new cameraman. They're out in the Arctic, so you can see even he looks a bit guilty about giving him commands or directions to do, because he is a nice guy, but he needs like X, Y, and Z shots. So the three of them are working really well as this dynamic. Now on the boat, I thought it was a really clever way of, of explaining the Arctic here very nicely and kind of who's on the ship. It was a lot of setup for what wasn't necessary. And I think that works in the movie's favour because I didn't know where this was going to go. What I mean by that is Icelandic Santa. I'm pretty sure that's what he gets called in this. He's the captain of the vessel. They're on the boat and there's a few different groups here. You've got a few Americans and a few kind of uni groups, couples on holiday, things like that. And he's the captain just calling out all these people and kind of getting them involved and having a bit of banter with them back and forth. And that, for an audience, lets us know exactly who's on this ship and who we're dealing with. It's great. Ray is just mingling with everybody that he can on this ship. Everyone he comes across, he bumps into he'll spark up a conversation. Alan, you see there's text messages coming through and he's kind of in a separation from his partner. So that's when he's on his own. Then we see him with people and he's the one that gets into the deep conversations about life, about science, whatever it may be. But he very quickly turns the, the conversation. It doesn't get dark, it just gets deep in a quite serious tone. I really don't think this movie would have worked without Ray and Alan having that bond together. If they'd been very similar, or they tried to be quite the same character, but clearly with different jobs within this TV show, wouldn't have worked. They balanced it really nicely here, and that undertone of their, they're here for their job, but their friendship is what really keeps them here. Well, that really sells this for me. The CG in this film is, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit janky. The budget, wasn't huge, I imagine, for this movie. What they have had, they've not put into the CG, which is fine. There really isn't a lot of it. It happens maybe a couple of times, you'll see like walruses or various animals, there's a polar bear. And sure, it looks a little bit off. It doesn't take up long. It's there for a few seconds, then it's gone. You know, why spend the money there where that budget could be used elsewhere for more effect? And you know what? I respect that decision. This is where the film turns. Now, it's not a spoiler. It is the kind of point of the movie. And well, the name Arctic Void might give it away. Everybody on the ship disappears, except the three main characters. Now the immediate reaction to this is what kept me in the movie, I think. I think this was the hinge that, that really would have either taken me out and might have even turned it off or I kept watching it and I'm glad they took this decision and I kept watching it. Immediately retraced their steps. They looked for the other crew, split up on the boat. It's not that big a boat either. And even when there's nobody there and one of them suggests that they're all in the engine room, the ridiculousness of that idea gets called out. Very good. I like that. It's good to see. So we are seeing animals just killing each other. You know, 
but there's some that you think are already dead or something's happened to these animals which isn't quite natural. So with the three on their own on this vessel, they just need to try and get to safety. They take the kind of dinghy, the raft off the back and they find a local town. I well, say local, it's local to them. There's nobody there but there's, you know, some lights on, a television, you know, in another room. But Alan ends up unwell and so Ray as his best friend is just trying to save his life. What comes after the kind of reveal and explanations, I kind of want to talk about. So I'm going to tread lightly to not spoil those moments. But once you work out what happened here, how it's revealed is very good. I really enjoyed the reveal and the reactions to the characters when kind of in this moment or, you know, even just saying it out loud, very believable. I was there for it. We understand a little bit more about the ongoings here. I like the decision that the characters in this film didn't resort to the only example I can think of is the likes of The Walking Dead. Someone is a villain, so the moment they can, they put them in a cell and lock them away. In reality, talk to that person, try and understand what's going on. And that's what they do here. And it's good because you can see the other perspective on it. Maybe not everyone's evil. Maybe not everyone's vindictive. Some things have just happened. Maybe some things are out of their control. That's really all I can say without spoiling it. You've seen the movie you'll know what I mean by that that once that reveal happens I thought it was good that they continued the kind of dynamic that they had and I'll kind of anti-spoil this here the how is explained to us and showed to us but not the why not so much anyway the film is setting up quite a quite a bleak scenario and I really do use that word heavily here and within this town there's nobody else there's remnants of people you know there's as I mentioned the TV on etc so people have been here because as we're moving to the finale of the movie all we're trying to do within the characters anyway get help get a phone signal find somebody that can support them whether that's anyone on the coast guard whatever the equivalent is there any kind of services you know it's not here trying to tell a message this movie it's not getting political it's just a good time not a lot of set design there was the boat and a few characters there but for the most part of this movie there's very few characters so you really do know by me just saying that alone that the characters are what drive this and i love myself a movie that's driven by characters i can't help but think that alan though looks a little bit like steve-o but in like, if he never went to Jackass, does that make sense? Like he never got all those injuries, he talks okay. I don't know, it may be me, but there's a few times in the movie that that took me out. Nothing wrong with the movie, that did its job. I just couldn't help but see Steve-O doing like a really dramatic acting performance here. I would love to rate this movie higher, but I am so aware that it's not for everybody. If I got my partner to watch it, she would want to turn it off after like, 10, 20 minutes. It is a bit of a slow burn. There's a question asked when everyone disappears the ship as to why. So if you're somebody that needs a movie that's full of just set up and pay off throughout the entire thing, you might want to give this one a miss. If you have the hour and a half spare, you like a movie that's got some great dialogue, good characters, very believable relationships and characters, give Arctic Void a watch. So when I'm going to rate this one, if you've got the time for this movie, give it a watch. So look, have you seen Arctic Void? Do you agree or disagree with anything I've said here? Please do let me know. To see more like this, I really do try and go for those movies that might be lesser seen and, and try and put a little bit of discussion around those movies. Please subscribe. That'd be much appreciated. Share it with your friends. That'd be awesome. But until next time, thank you for watching.